Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia La Pacho here in Paraguay. I am just racing along the road, very realistically, with the booms fully stretched out like this, because uh, yeah, everybody would drive along like this, surely. Okay, may may maybe not quite, but um, I'm doing it all, I'm, I'm doing it nonetheless. I'm being a rebel, I'm rebelling against the system. And we've actually come out at just the right point. I want to go to here because there's one little bit that I want to spray just here. And if I start that one up, there we go. There's just this little corner here. And then I want to whip round and go up to field four behind me. And we need to get that one sprayed. And then that's all of the fields. Except for the little bit of grass right here. Oh, and now field 12. We bought field 12 yesterday. And we are now going to need to actually do something with it. Um, you know what? While I'm here, I may as well carry on and do this field here. We'll carry on through. Then we'll go up through to field four. And then we can go on further still to field 12. And we're going to have to do a few coats on field 12. Most of the rest of the farm has now had uh, all the fertilizer that it's going to need. Uh, this field right here is going to need a couple more. I think it's going to need one more, actually. I think it's only one. Oh, 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 steady. Steady. Let's just back that up a little bit. I'm getting a bit carried away here. Um, we want to come up there. Before I start turning, it's a little bit different turning with this one than it is with some of the sprayers. Because the other sprayers, obviously, the boom is at the back. And it uh, moves out slightly. Whereas this moves in slightly as you're going along. And it, it does make a difference. It is actually, I've noticed a significant difference with when you're turning on the sharp corners. Uh, you can actually notice it quite well. Um, most of it, it, it doesn't really make any difference at all. You don't really pay it any attention. But there is the odd bit where it's making a difference. And also, the, the wide booms on this... I mean, this, is a narrow, this has got a narrow boom on it, and this is designed for fields which are like this. Slightly more undulating than normal, and it's still digging into the ground in places, just because of how uneven this ground is. So I dread to think what it would be like on the really rough place. I don't know if we're going to be able to use a sprayer up on the plateau. I think we're going to have to use the fertilizer spinning option up there rather than sprayer option. See, if I bring that round there, the boom was going in the right direction, but now it's not. Let's come back there and then come in. Um, I suppose it, it is actually, now that I think about it, it does seem to be a little bit easier to control where the end of the boom goes as you turn around the corner. We got one tiny little patch right there that we didn't seed and I tried that from all different angles and it was just one bit that I couldn't actually get the seed to plant on unfortunately so that's why we've got that tiny little bit there and then we can come around like this get that bit there um, I could probably leave this going with the hired help now now that we've done once around the edge and let's see let's, let's just see if the hired help can cope with it Sort of seems to be able to cope with it. So I don't have a weekly question this week. I have instead a request for you all. And no, it was it was drifting off in the wrong way. So I'm going to move it back this way like this. And then I'm going to try it again. Um, yeah, my, my request for you all this week is to make suggestions in the comment section down below about what map you'd like me to play on next. Because we are going to be moving on fairly soon to another map and I'm not at the moment sure which map you'd like me to play so I want suggestions and then I will pick out four or five of my favorites and I will put those up for a vote so you will get to have a say in what we play it's just that you've got to make the suggestions first and make your voice heard if you want a chance to choose the next map then make sure you make a suggestion this week so that I see it and then I will sort of take it from there right that one's going all right it left a little bit right up this end. That's all right. We'll let that one carry on. That one's going to do its thing there. We've got the only other thing that we need to worry about. Well, there's two things. Um, this one right here has very nearly almost finished. We've got great demand for potatoes. We don't grow potatoes. Well, not yet anyway. We will be growing some potatoes. So that one there is just going through, right? Two more passes and this field will be finished. And then we've got to plant something in it as well. Uh, we'll let that one go. This one here is almost filled up. We can check. Actually, let's just check the price because it was uh, two. Oh, it was two seven nine. It's gone up a little bit more still. It's still rising at the moment. So we're not going to go and sell it just yet. But what I will do is I'll move forward a little bit and we'll load up the final carriage so that it is ready to go. There we go. If I stop there, I don't know if the back one. I think the back one takes it anyway. 
Um, it's got the... Oh, there we go. It does got the... It's got the sugar bit symbol on the back, but, um, yeah, it does also take sugar cane as well. And I, I got a feeling that when we first had the trains, the back carriages, you could only put the root crops in. But um, maybe they changed that or something? I, I, I genuinely don't know at the moment. I'm going to shut that one off there. Leave him there. And we are going to go back up here onto this plateau. We're going to go to this one. We're going to start it up. And we're away again. So we've got these big heaps here. Now, I'm not going to be doing too much plowing in this episode. Because I did a whole load of this in the last episode. Um, what we will be doing is, aside from moving our sprayer around and making, keeping that one running properly, uh, we're also going to be going up to the pigs, uh, well, where the pigs are going to help a queue has completed the task. We'll go and move the sprayer in just a moment. Let's just get this heap out of the way a minute. Um, but yeah, what we'll do is we're going to go up to the pigs, we're going to take a look at them, and we're going to see how and where the best place for doing the... Um, the, the new sheds that we're going to do up there for them. And I'm completely stuck, aren't I? I'm completely and hopelessly... Oh, there we go. I launched myself. Sometimes it does some very strange things on this. Like I said last uh, in yesterday's episode, I, I'm absolutely certain that these wood chips are the world's new super material. This is what all these scientists have been looking for. And we've got it right here. Look at it. Look how strong it is. I, I, I'm straining against this. Trying to trying to sort of come off of it, and it's, it's not working. Um, lower it down. Let's try lifting it up while we're straining on it. Look at me go! You can see it. It's, it's doing something here. Um, doing something again. Let's try going forward now. No, I'm, com I'm completely stuck on it now. Tell you what, I'm going to bring this one out, and I'm going to unhitch it there. And then I'm going to hitch it back on again, and I'm hoping that will do something. Oh, it's, it's done something. It's definitely done something. Uh, let me lift it up. There we go. Now we're talking. I think i got to activate uh, allow create fields again. So lower that down once more. Perfect. There. Right. Now we've done it. So I can bring that one back around like that. And... I'm just going to go up to the corner, then we're going to go, we're going to run and grab the Stara again, and I'm just going to move that one up, because it's done that little bit of grass that we wanted done. So we'll just stop that one right there a second, and then we'll flick over to the Stara, which is just here, here, here. I'll, I'll get it eventually. There we go. Nailed it. First time. Um, I've done that whole thing where it turns around far too soon. So hired help is, hired help is okay, but it does have these, uh, th these little moments of insanity where it's it does let itself down and i know i say this a lot but i remain hopeful that farming simulator 19 is going to have a far superior hired help system i remain ever hopeful on this particular front i really do and, and i genuinely hope that they do that they address this whole issue with because i know that the hired help is pretty good um but i don't think at the, mo at the moment, you kind of get the impression that you're being penalised for using hired help. And you do a better job if you do it yourself. And you, you, you know, using hired help to do the job, you end up getting penalised for it. You end up losing um, some area that's not done. You've got to go back around, you've got to tidy it up afterwards. Now, if you're actually running a farm, um, most farmers I know employ people at one time or another on their farm. Right, there's a little strip there that's already been done, so I'm going to go over to this side, and I'm going to do it from this side. Most farmers I know employ people. At one time or another, they all employ somebody. And, you know, if you were to employ somebody who, and then you had to go out to the field after they were finished, and you had to go and tidy up everything they'd done, you wouldn't keep them employed for very long. You'd soon get rid of them. You'd soon send them up the road and send them packing. So I don't know why we've got to have that in this game. Why do we hire people that don't do the job properly? This is, this is something that I, it, it, it does vex me a little bit. If you're running a farm, the last thing you want is have to go out yourself and, you know, tidy up the jobs after somebody else has gone and done it. So you, you would only have people there who knew how to do the job properly. And if you were having to go and do that, you'd let them go. 
and you definitely wouldn't be taking them back again. You, you wouldn't go and say, oh, right, well, I had to do that. I didn't like it, but uh, here, go and do another field, which is what we have to do in this game. So I really hope that they do address this, and we have hired help that can actually, like, you know, drive around the edge of the field to start with, and then when they've driven around the edge of the field, then they start working on the land work, which would allow us to have, like, you know, natural edged fields rather than square fields everywhere. And that, I think, in itself would be absolutely phenomenal. Having uh, natural edged fields would be brilliant. We'd be able to, you know, actual, like, normal looking fields. And I know that in some parts of the world you do actually have square edge fields, but you don't have a square field that then has nothing around it for ages, so you can go off the edge of the field to turn around. You turn around inside the field. Um, well, you, you do in the majority of the world. I'm sure there's probably some places in the world that have farms and fields that look a bit like um, they actually do here in Farming Simulator, but I'm guessing that if there are any such farms, they are few and far between. Um, I've, I've never personally encountered anything even remotely similar to what we have in this game. Um, am I stuck on the, the, the world's most amazing super material again? I didn't think that that was high enough for me to actually get stuck on it, which is why I went up over the top of it. Alright, we'll come over this side. We'll swing round a bit there, like that. And I'll lower it down and just take out the worst of it. Uh, you know, I'm not actually lowering it. Let's try that button. That would lower it down. There we go. Right, now we can lift up and go forward a bit. Nope, let's come back round there. Uh, let's try that. There! Now we've done it. Swing back up this way a bit. Lower down again. And now we're okay. It's, it's all good. It's all is well with the world. We've only got low levels of the stuff. We don't have any really high stacks of widget. I am starting to seriously consider going around this field first with a cultivator so that we can get rid of these great big lumps and then we come back over with the plough and we don't have to worry about the, um, the world's most impressive super material catching our challenger and not letting it go anywhere because it's starting to become a little bit tiresome. Although, I say that, we don't actually have that many huge heaps left. There's one huge heap there. I do have the odd stump stuck in the field here as well that we're going to have to deal with, but again, it's not going to be a major hardship because most of those were gone as well anyway. We, we, we end up getting rid of most of the stumps. There weren't very many left over. Um, now, this bit here, we'll just come up through here so that we can sort of run a slightly straighter line there, and we'll get that little bit that we missed probably on the next round, actually. There we go. That's looking a lot tidier. In through there and grab that little bit. Perfect. Oh, no, there's another lump here that I missed. Am I going to be able to go over it? Just. Maybe if I turn. Turn this way. Turn it. Uh, turn anyway. Any way at all. Uh, maybe if I do it that way. There we go. Go there and then I want to go forward just a bit. A bit more. Perfect, right, okay, so we've done that, and then we come back round here. Helper L has completed their task, so we've done field four. We want to go up and we want to start spraying field uh, 12 in just a second. We'll do that in a minute. We're just going to run down here. Hopefully we can get a clean run all the way down to the end of our field. I quite like the look of this field. I mean, you look all the way back up through there. This is going to look really cool once it's got some stuff planted in it. I mean, the first crop I think we're going to have some serious problems with. Um, we are definitely going to be leaving a very large ring around the edge where we're not planting anything. And then we're going to be putting potatoes in here. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to have a very wide area around the edge of the potatoes. It's going to be strips, well, a strip up through the middle. Um, and at least like two or three tractors widths around the edge just so that um, we're a, it's, it's the harvesting the potatoes I'm most concerned about planting them is not going to be so much of a problem but harvesting them is going to be a problem and also we've got to remember that if we're using the tractor drawn harvester it is painfully slow using a tractor drawn harvester in this game it is, it is a horribly slow and tiresome job which means and we don't really want to do jobs that are quite that slow and tiresome in just a normal let's play because quite frankly you're gonna get bored to tears watching me do that so i don't want to spend too long on that particular task i want to be able to get through it reasonably quickly 
um, even to the point where we might do some of it with the tractor drawn machinery and then we might see about just getting a, um, a self-propelled harvester up here to just finish the job off or something like that. I'm not quite sure at the moment. Um, you can talk about it in the comments section. What would you like to see me doing with the potatoes? Um, I'm definitely doing some of it with the tractor drawn machinery. Uh, so you will get to see, and it'll be the Roper stuff. We'll, we'll use the, the one from the Roper DLC. So you'll definitely get to see that one in action. It's just how much you get to see, uh, sort of, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, but, well, one, how much I plan, and two, how long it actually takes to do it, because it could be a very, very, very slow job to do. I mean, if we, as long as we keep it in the middle and we've got plenty of room around the edges, we shouldn't have any problem using the hired help up here. So we can get the hired help actually doing the harvesting. And then, um, and I think the Roper one actually, um, I think that one you don't need to cut the tops off beforehand. I think that Roper tractor drawn potato harvester does actually have the capacity to remove the tops itself, which is quite a bonus compared to the standard, is it Grim, isn't it? Is it the, the Grim one. Um, it's quite a bonus compared to that one because it's a very slow and time-consuming job having to go through and remove the tops first. That's one of the bits that does is what makes potatoes take so long, is having to remove the tops. So if you don't have to worry about those, it's going to speed the whole process up quite a bit. Now we're going to go over, we're going to do sort of part of one more round, and then we're going to go and grab our star and we're going to move that one. Then we're going to go up towards the pigs, and we're going to take a look up there, and see what is going to be needed. I'm wondering if we can get away with not having to do much in the way of ground preparation. If we can just like throw a few sheds down. We've only got to do a small shed. And I'm going to use one. You know the sheds that we got back at the yard with the um, the auto loading for the bales. So that we don't actually have to worry about the bales. Am I going to be able to get over this? It's not a very big heap. Oh, it's because there's a great big stump in the way. That would, that, that would explain it. That, that. Um, I, I feel that is kind of understandable um, as to why that would be really difficult. Actually, I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, we'll come back and we'll finish that bit off afterwards. There's another bit of stump over here somewhere. I can't remember where it is now. I was looking at it just now before it um, got hidden from sight by all the, uh, the, um, the shrubs and stuff. I think it's just up here. We come along this bit and we come on round. And it's just to our right here above this little sort of kink bit that's sticking out. It's around here somewhere. And where is it? I don't actually see it. It's in the middle of these shrubs here. It might, it might just be the one that I've already gone through. I may have misjudged it. Let's just come back and get that little bit there that we missed. There we go. Or maybe I did misjudge. I can't actually see it there at the moment. It's going to be around here somewhere. You know it's got to be around here somewhere. And we are rapidly closing on the rest of this field. We're, we're doing... I'm impressed at how well we've done with this job. I, I didn't think that we'd sort of get it quite so efficiently and well, to be honest. Um, saying that, I've got another great big heap here that I seem to be struggling with. Let's do that one from this side. Oh, the plow... I've still got the plow lowered. I didn't realise I still had it lowered into the ground. I'm swinging it round wildly from side to side asking you to think asking you to watch my realistic gameplay here while I hammer this one uh, just had a drink but yeah and um, uh, while I hammer this one from side to side um and talking about realism so yeah uh, just, just just ignore that last little bit actually you're probably going to have to ignore most of what's going on up here on the plateau anyway because I'm, I'm aware that a lot of this is not particularly realistic we've got another heap here I've really these heaps are so well hidden in the shrubs you don't sort of notice that they're there until you're right up on top of them. Let's move that one over there. Right. Let's try that there. Excellent. It's another chunk. And swing that round that way and then back a bit. It's not going to go back very far, is it? I'm completely stuck on it now. There we go. There's some of it out. I think we're going to have to go... Actually, I'm not really sure which way we want to go. We'll, we'll come over here, and then come round a bit. And then round a bit. Oh, no. Is that going to be enough? No, that's not That's not even coming close to it. That isn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I got some of it there. I got some. 
as long as if you can get some of it and then you can move a little bit it's sort of because what it does it removes the item but the the um the invisible sort of um collision that was on it doesn't disappear immediately you've got to um be able to move a fraction to be able to remove the last of the collision that was on it and because of the way that it's working it also piles it up in a strange manner when um or it leaves the heap in a strange manner you look at that it's it's very sort of sharp on the edges kind of like when you're removing if you came into it with a bucket it would spread it out a lot more but because you go into it with something like this it doesn't spread out i've just got one knee left let me just take out i just i just want to remove that one little bit please finally finally we got it there we go right <laughs> this stuff is brilliant you you wouldn't think it would be that difficult to plow in a few wood chips would you i mean in all honesty you really wouldn't have thought that it would be that much of an arduous task to plow in just a handful of wood chips and that's all we've got here it's just they're only like small handfuls that there there's not like massive quantities there's only there's only small bits what have we got here how big is this lump can you get right over that oh we got one ideal we actually got one that was relatively simple to get through and i i did say that i was gonna go didn't i i got carried away i, I got caught up with trying to do the cultivating the plowing whatever you want to call it uh just ease that on around there okay we'll stop right there we'll stop there that's the perfect place to stop so let's go through now to where is it right we'll run this one back up through here we'll stop beside the truck on the way through because i'm not quite sure that the 600 liters is going to be enough to do field 12 it probably will be in all honesty i don't think we're going to need a lot more than that uh, but just in case we will top this one right the way back up and the amount that we've already taken it could well be that the few containers that are left on the lorry are only partly filled anyway so there is a good chance that we will empty out everything that is on the back of the lorry although that being said chances are it won't happen because i was just thinking that that would be actually pretty good because it would tidy it up nicely so it's almost definitely not going to be able to happen then so let's just start it up what do we got uh no it doesn't look like it's going to happen but we can fill these right up anyway so there's one almost done okay it looks like that was a completely full tank that we had i'm not going to use up any of them at all so now we want to take this one over here we're going to go up the side of this field rather than going all the way around on the road we're going to go up the side here just so that we can admire our new field run down the length of it we've got the hut right here and there is just enough room to get past that hut right in through there and then we can come racing up through here there's a lot of weeds that are just inside the field i'm actually thinking that we could go up through there with um well we'd probably have to go up through there with the plow if we were to get the plow and put the gps system on and then do one line up through here and just sort of have a track along the side of the road i'm thinking that might actually be quite a good idea it would um allow us to establish the boundaries of our field a little bit and then we've got a track that runs up this side because now that we've got this field here a track running up towards this field would be quite useful I'm not quite sure where i want to be every time every time i think i'm in the right place it unfolds another layer be about right there i think um is it going to be two passes it might actually be just two passes let's put that one in there that is just far enough over perfect right so now we want to go back down to the yard and we want to get our next vehicle so that we can go and have a look up towards the pigs that was the next thing that we wanted to do and i don't want to do it with that one today i would like to have a drive around with this one and i need to open the, the garage door first there we go there it is there is our beautiful caddy so let's take this one out for a little drive we haven't been we haven't been for a drive in the caddy for a few days now a number of people have said they would like me to try and chop down our pink tree here and i love this tree so i'm not going to I'm, we will try this at the very very end of the series about chopping this tree down but i'm i'm not doing so you know i'm, I'm not in a great rush to do it i, I i'm really not i, I kind of like the idea of keeping the tree there i also really like 
I want to be able to come out and maybe if I if I do this I, I wanted to be able to have a look at this and like get a, um, a screenshot where I'm, I'm looking at both the caddy and the tree um, and also the 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 where would be a good that looks pretty good sort of do it like that that looks quite nice I like that that might be the screenshot, that might not. Although, see, I, I don't know why I bother talking to you about the screenshot and then um, discussing whether or not I'm going to use it for... Um, actually, I don't want to go out there. We don't want to take our caddy through the yard. Get all muddy and dirty. Um, yeah, because you've already seen a screenshot. By the time you're watching the episode, the, the, I've generally already decided what the screenshot's going to be. And you will have already seen it for the thumbnail. Um, yeah, let's, let's not worry about minor details like that. Let's... We've got we've got the top down. You can't actually put the can you put the top up with this? It'd be very cool if you could. Uh just stop a minute. Right in front of that vehicle. Nope. Okay. There is no option to do that. There's no option to we we can honk. Like that. I don't know if you can hear that very well. Um but there's no option to put the top up. But anyway, the sun is shining, the top is down, and we are racing along. Helper R has completed their task. How have they completed their task already? There seems to be a little bit over, um, a little bit too, a little bit too efficient. A little bit too efficient. I'm not entirely sure that they could have gone all the way up the field and back again. I suspect what they've done is they've gone over the field and then they stopped. So we're just going to park up right there a minute. And we are going to go, rather than um, constantly spamming through all the machinery, we're going to do it like this. Uh, soil composition. No, fruit. Uh, I don't want to go back to there. I don't want to take off the knees plowing. Oh, I see what it's done. I see what it's done. It's gotten to the end of the field and it's decided it doesn't like actually doing any work. And so it's turned around and it's come back again. If I go here like this, it should be able, it should be able to do one more pass up across the field. But it's helper it is completed you have not completed your task let's go on a little bit further and then see what it will do completed their task okay it's, it's, it's going to be one of those so we're gonna to have to do this ourselves which means that we're gonna to have to run all the way up through there I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna regret buying this field aren't I there is one way that you can get around this um, usually what you've got to do is you've got to do the outside pass so what I generally do um, especially on maps where I've made all the fields bigger, like I did in Goldcrest Valley. I haven't done it quite so much in this one. Um, but if you make the fields bigger, I do the first round around the outside. And even if you've got square fields, even if you don't do all the round around the outside, if you do one pass up one side, and then you go over to the other side of the field and you start your hired help on the other side of the field, working its way down, it will complete the entire field. It's only when it's up against the edge of the field that it does this whole thing where it sort of stops part way and says that it's um, it's finished. And I'm not quite, it was something that, somebody did explain it, it's something to do with the, the, the meshes and where it's reading the field and to do with trees and stuff. And it, it sounded very complicated. Um, but that is the way around it. You, you need to manually do one side on the field and then start the hired help from the other side. Which is great and all, but when you've got like um, two bits like we've got on this field, um, you're just two passes like we've got on this field, you can't do that. So you've then manually got to just, you have to bring it down one side. But yeah, that is a way around it. So like on this field here, if I was to manually do this side here closest to us and then start the hide up way down over there at the other side, it would work its way all the way across and then it would finish, except that we've got that little bit in the middle. Um, we won't worry about that. Right, I'm going to stop you right there. And I'm not going to do any more with that one. That one is there ready to do field 12 again when we get another growth stage. We're going to come down here to back to our convertible. Our beautiful pink with the electric... Is that... That's not electric. Is that electric blue? That's kind of a lightning electric blue on the wheels. I'm very proud of the colour that we picked for the wheels. I like the colour that we picked. I tell you what, I would genuinely... I would genuinely drive around a car that was coloured like this. So I think this car is absolutely wickedly colored is brilliant if i could afford to take my car to get it spray painted i would come out with something that looks like this um yes my children and my wife would uh, be thoroughly ashamed to be seen anywhere with me in public and would insist that i um did it to my own car rather than the family car um 
but uh, yeah, and and really, my own car is well. Currently, my own car is off the road, um, and it, it's just an old runaround car that's had paint spilled in the back of it. The back seats have been folded down for years. The, the vehicle in the ditch. I didn't notice it, but yeah, my my car is a little better than like an old work van um, with back windows in it. Um, that, that's about it. And okay. I didn't expect to see that one there. I know that there is a bus in the river up there, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, my, my my work my car is um is pretty grim. So really, I think if if I can afford to get a spray paint job like this, I ought to really wait until I can afford a better car as well. That that's another thing that we need to improve upon. That the quality of my car before I start worrying about other things. Now, looking around here, that the feed area for the pigs is there, and. I do actually want a vehicle to drive around because then I can zoom out like this and we can see better. We don't want to be building anything too close to the ruins here. That just feels churlish and, you know, just... You know, we don't want to be that kind of landowner that goes destroying national monuments. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, and famous archaeological sites. Well, I don't want to be that person. Um, everybody knows a farmer that is that person and nobody likes that person either. So no, I'm not going. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to start destroying monuments. Um, we could build something over here. We could build one shed over here. But the more I think about this, we're, if we're doing potatoes already, I'm thinking that really the best place to be putting these sheds would be over here. We've got uh, there, there is the house there where the person who looks after the pigs they can live. Um, we've got is that water tower actually a water supply? Yeah, I'm not sure. It might be. Um, so we've got everything that we need right here. And that's where we put in food and water for the pigs. So really I'm thinking that we should be building the stuff over here. We, we, we own this field right here. We don't actually have anything on this field. And I was suggesting that we could do root crops here on this field. But I'm now thinking that we don't need to worry about that. We're doing a load of potatoes. That's going to be all the root crops that we're going to need. So we could do sort of off the edge here somewhere... Um, maybe actually backed up to this shed here, we could do one of the, uh, the shed for the bales. And then we just need something for grain. Now, I don't know if I've got activated any mods that are for grains. Let's just have a look at that. It's definitely not these. We don't want the silo extensions. They're no good for this particular job. Um, we've got these barns here we've got round bale and we've got square bale we'll use square bale up here the only thing we're going to want up here is the straw we don't need to worry about anything else a root crop storage would actually be quite handy up this end so that we can use that for feeding the pigs and then we want grain now it's these here we got multi-storage various there that will take uh, the bulk stuff if we want it and we got a multi-storage here for grain which does the standard grains that we would want 800,000 liters per type this thing is a monster this is an absolute beast of a machine um wheat barley rape sunflower soybean potato sugar beet and pig food see it says pig food silo i thought maybe it made up the pig food but i'm now i'm thinking it doesn't so this one hit 185,000. don't have enough money i was wanting to see what it looked like when we went and placed it but it doesn't let me do it is it um i want to see how much space it takes up Right, I'll tell you what, let's, let's, uh, let's just come out of here a minute and we'll go into our money, to our finances, and we will borrow a little bit more. We are we got a loan of 205000 at the moment, so we're going to ramp our loan up a bit. There we go, 190000 If we sell a few bits and pieces, we'll be able to make some of that back. 280 at the transport company at the moment. It's a nice bit of cash, that is. So there we go, 185 multi-storage regret. Whoa, this thing is huge. Uh, okay, this is a lot bigger than I thought. This thing is an absolute monster. What am I supposed to do with that? We've only got like 200 pigs here. I don't need something this big. But this is the only one I think that will actually do the task that we want it to do. I mean, we could put it over there. So it's it's more sort of out the way. Um, Let's just rotate round a bit. How far away are we from our national monument? The monument's over there. We could put it up there and it'd be out of the way, or we could bring it over here. Um, press shift, speed it up a little bit. There, right. Um, that's as far out as I can get while I'm looking at this. Uh, we could sort of put it there. 
What is it going to look like if we put it there? That that might not be too bad, actually. If, if we can plonk it down in there. We're going to need to remove those trees if we do it there. Comments in the comment section. I want you in the comment section today. Do you think we should put it here next to the bridge? So this is next to the bridge right here. Um, do you think we should put it in the field, which is over here? I mean, I'll move it over a bit so that we're not right it. We're not using up the entire field. Uh, but we've also got to be aware of where the, the off ramp. Yeah, I think about there would be about right. That probably wouldn't be too. That would, probably wouldn't be too bad right there. So in the field. Or near the bridge over here and and then we've got a third option which is over here which is uh, sort of near the uh, well the other side of the road this is the other side of the road over here and we can put it up there so it's a little bit away we do have to use a trailer to move stuff backwards and forwards um, so other side of the road near the bridge uh, well yeah near the bridge over there or um, in the field Get into the comment section and tell me what you think. What are your thoughts about where we should put that huge, great, big um, silo? Because that's the one that we want. That will take the grain separately. We can bring them over here in bulk in the truck. And then we can unload them into that one and we can leave them there. And, um, and then we've got storage there for food for the pigs. So we could increase the, the, the uh, capacity for the pigs as well. We could put a load more pigs in. We have a shed for straw for the pigs and we've got a load of barley that's growing and that's going to provide us with a load more straw as well we're going to leave that straw on the ground we're going to bale it up and then we've got straw for the pigs we'll have straw for the cows uh, we'll have everything that we could possibly need in theory everything we could possibly need in theory whether or not it's going to work out i'm not quite sure that grain silo one more thing does that grain silo hold um potatoes no that one that one does sugar beet but it doesn't do potatoes Oh, no, it does do. That's potato right there. Of course it is. Okay. We don't really want something that big for the potato. So we do that one. And then uh, near the pigs themselves, we'll do the square bale storage. And then we've got a root crop storage here as well. If you just look at this one, let me... Hang on. Uh, let me run back over to the pigs over here. So the root crop storage doesn't take up as much space. This, this one's a lot less. So it'd be quite easily go over here if we decide to go over there. And then if we're in the field here... We'd probably just put this one down over this way. I mean, it'd be it'd face around the other way. We'd come around this way. And we could still use half the field here. So we'd still be able to do that. So you put this one here. So you tip them out on this side. And then you load them from the other side. Um, I mean, we could even... We could even put it here. If we got the bales there, that side of the house, we could put this one here somewhere. That could actually still work. And there's also room to put this one in over here. We could, like, tuck this one in down here somewhere. That's too close to the bridge. Doesn't like that. Uh, that's just because the tree is there. We'd have to just move. Once the tree is moved, it, sh it should be able to place. And then the other one would be a f little bit further back. So, yeah, the, the root crop storage would place in there as well. We wouldn't want any others. Um, I think it's going to I think it's gonna work out all right. I think, I think it could actually do quite well with it. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll wait and see though. So yeah, comment section, where do you think I should place those items up there by the pigs? And we'll get them placed. And once they're placed down, I think we're actually ready to say, yes, we can start farming pigs on our map. So we'll still be waiting. We won't have root crops quite ready for them yet. But we've got other grains that we can use. And we can move some grains up there. And when we're doing our weekly random events, the grains that we'll be talking about will be the ones that be in the main storage. I'm sort of thinking that maybe we should limit ourselves to, say, 50,000 or something up at the... or one trailer load up at the top. So that we don't, like, stick everything up in the separate storage and avoid any um, pests in storage or something. Or we can, like, randomly decide which storage is the one that's affected, either the pig storage or the main farm storage. It could, it could be either one. But yeah, the, the important thing today is for you to tell me whether or not you think, uh, or where you think I should be placing these items up there by the pigs. Is it by the bridge? Is it by the field? Or is it by the monument? Or the, you know, the other side of the road? Um, and then once we've established that, then we can decide exactly how we lay things out. And we can start moving some crops up there. And we're going to need to get uh, um, the water bowser up there as well so that we can get some water in for them. And we, we got a lot to do. So let's get back home with this one. And then we've got just... Well, we've got a little bit of time left. We're going to go back to the Challenger. And we're going to carry on doing some ploughing up there on the plateau. Just to finish things up. 
Um, my weekly question this week is I need you to get into the comments se section and not the comments session, the comments section and I need you to suggest to me what maps you want me to try out. What map would you like me to play next? That is the important thing we're trying to decide is what do you want me to play next? And then once you have made all your suggestions, I will pick out some of my favorites and I will put those up for a vote so that you still all get a choice of which maps you want to play. Um, I do realize that there is always going to be people that are upset with the choices on the vote and with the final choice. Um, but quite frankly, it is not physically possible to pick out a map that every single person is going to be pleased with. So just keep that in mind when you're um, complaining about uh, what other people's choices are and so on and so forth. Um, we operate on democracy here, and the great thing about democracy is that it, it you know, it works really well. And the, the terrible thing about democracy is it doesn't always give us what we want. Um, and, and, Yes, uh, so th there's always a, there's pros and cons for democracy depending on whether or not your choice wins. That is that is the, the downside to democracy. I said I was going to go up the plateau, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to speed time up a little bit like this. And I'm just having a look at the price. I want to see if it's going to go up at all. Seem to have gone up at the moment. We're going to carry on up this hill. Still on to eight. What? Well, why has it not gone up at all? I thought it would have gone up. We've we've spent an hour. Still on 281. Okay, let's slow down. It's not going to go any higher than 281. 281 is the limit. So we will sell this load. And we come into my other... Well, no, we actually... I mean, the hired help, I'd like to see it improve. But it's not my main complaint. You know, I've, I've found ways to work around that that I'm quite happy with in this game. Um, my only, like, major complaint I've ever had with farming simulator 17 is the way that selling is done i've turned up here with a train load of 300,000 liters of sugarcane okay it's a lot of sugarcane and i'm telling the person i'm selling you 300,000 liters he says that's fine i've got i'm offering 281 per thousand liters i say that's fine that's brilliant. I'll take 281 per thousand litres. I got 300,000 litres here. I'm going to make a fortune out of this. So then I unload the first load. I do this. Here we go. Uh, hang on. I need to actually unload. There we go. I unload. I unload the first load like this. There we go. You've got the first 110,000 litres going in right now. No, 100, 120,000 litres. There you go. He's given us 33,813. And then he turns around and he says, you know what? I know you've turned up and you've gone to all the trouble of getting it here, but for the next bit of your load, I'm only going to give you 250. I can't be... I don't want to give you 281 anymore. I was only offering that on the first bit. I'm going to give you 259. Okay, fine. I've got the stuff here. I may as well accept it. So I'll take your 259 for my remaining 180,000 litres. Have the first 90,000. There you go. And I'll just shunt into position to get the last 90,000 litres. We can get it unloaded. For the aforementioned 259 and then he says well i've been thinking about this i'm thinking i'm only going to give you 242 for the very last load because quite frankly i think the 259 was being a bit too generous and i got no choice but to accept that's not how it would happen in real life that would never ever happen there is no scenario anywhere on the planet where you go along with a load and he changes the price halfway through unloading your load. It, it would never happen. And that is my one complaint that I've always had with Farming Simulator 17 is the way they've done it. I do like the way that they changed it from FS15 because the FS15, the price would only change every hour on the hour. And I that kind of felt, you know, I felt that it could definitely be improved upon. But this, this whole thing where the, the price changes instantly after one load it's, it's basically forcing you to take a modified trailer and put everything into one trailer and that's the bit that i don't like i would like to be able to sell the entire load without having to worry about um the, the price dropping in between trailers in the same load so say you had like a, a 45 second window or a 60 seconds between the trailer unloading and the price adjusting and if you start unloading another trailer the timer resets 
So you've got 60 seconds or 30 seconds because it doesn't take very long to um, move trailers, does it? It doesn't take very long at all. I was going too fast then. Um, I was going way too fast then. Um, it doesn't take very long to move trailers. So if you had a 30 second counter that starts counting as soon as the one trailer is finished unloading and then after 30 seconds the price adjusts except that if you start unloading another trailer before that 30 seconds is up the counter resets so you got 30 seconds so you could have like three or four tractors say on follow me um, and take those in and you could start unloading all of them you could unload one tractor and then you could move it forward and then you could start unloading the next tractor and you could um, and still get the same price that to me would be something that would be realistic and I feel I, I don't see that there is any reason why you couldn't do that in the game why that couldn't work so I very very much hope that they do tweak this whole system slightly and and sort of put some sort of at least like a counter or something in there so that we've got a slightly more realistic thing so that you know we can actually use road trains and we don't have to stuff everything into the biggest trailer we can possibly find because that's kind of what it's pushing you to do at the moment and i really don't like that bit but anyway i spent so long selling stuff i haven't really got time to do any plowing now and we kind of run out of time for today's episode so if you enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome and until next time thank you very much for watching this is frithgar goodbye and see you later